Would you stand with us tonight? We're going to worship God tonight together. I'm looking forward to being in His presence. I've been a lot of other places this week. And his presence is going to be the best place so far. Yes, amen. on his life tonight. Yes. We need to remember Mingo um, Residential Care, the, the folks that live out there. They're dealing with COVID. We need to remember them tonight. We need to remember Sister Pam. Uh, Brother Poy Marty mentioned that she's um, sick tonight. We need to remember AJ's daughter uh, for spinal fluid leaking into her brain. And Ma 
Monica Carmen for seizures, Kathy Williamson and Tony Nelson for cancer. Ashley Johnson needs a continued touch from the Lord, and she needs increased function to be more specific. Um, we need to remember Hannah Minnick tonight. She still needs to find the truth, and she needs to be sober. We need to remember Sister Judy's mother and brother. They're both sick tonight. They need the Lord's touch. We need to remember Carolyn Rogers for back pain. Chloe Isaac, she still needs our prayers for her health. And also, we need to continue to remember Punxico. There's a lot of people in this place called Punxico that need God. And there's a lot of tactics from the enemy that would come against us that would want to hinder us from stopping our mission in this town and in this community. But it's still the will of God that people know who He is. It's still the will of God that people find true salvation and they know him deeply and have a relationship with him and and ultimately live with him in eternity so tonight let's pray for our community and let's pray for ourselves that we would not um, find anything between us and that mission that god has set us on Amen. hallelujah let's take these needs before him right now lord we worship you tonight god Pray, God, right now for your spirit to fall into this place stronger than it has ever gone into the lives and hearts of every person that's in this room tonight, God. We pray right now, God, that you would just touch us each one, God. I pray that you would give us strength, God, and help us, guide us through everyday life, Lord, as it comes. In the name of Jesus, I pray against cancer and I release healing in this place, Lord. I pray against sickness, God, and I release your healing power in this place right now and into those people, God, who need you to touch them tonight. I pray for your hand of protection upon Colton, God. I pray that you would just touch him in his life, God. I pray that you would guide him in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for any person in this place tonight that just needs to hear your still small voice, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for Frank and Jamie Joe and all the kids, God, for the situation that you see, God. You know every part of it, God. And I pray that you would just touch them, God, and help them and strengthen them and protect them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I worship you. God, I know that you break every chain in this place tonight. Hallelujah, God. I know that you want to move in this place tonight.
Trust in me and my arm will bring the victory. Do not look to the right or left. Do not be swayed by what you see. My faith and trust in me.
want you to lift your hands and just receive strength and encouragement. Whatever that you brought into this place, whatever your need is right now, receive that strength from the Lord. And that answer that he gives tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
as he comes to minister the word of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Well, you can be seated Hallelujah. if everybody's out of your area. It'll take me a bit to get situated here. Brother Steve, yes, can I say something while you're getting situated? Sure, go ahead. Uh, this morning, uh, I was listening to Dr. David Jeremiah, and uh -huh. he was talking about perseverance this morning. Right. And, you know, even uh, Mark and I are dealing with truck issues. Since we got in the house, it's been nothing but truck issues. And right. I'm like, you know, when we moved in the house, I said, Lord, just leave me on the mountain for a little while. But it didn't last long, you know, because he's constantly working on us and wanting us to trust him. That's right. Well, he told this story this morning about perseverance. And her means to go through. Her means through. And severe, it's severe, you know. Right. He wants us to have that heart to get through. That's right. And go through it. And he talked about this uh, marathon from... Sydney, Australia to Melbourne. It was 500 miles. You got all these runners in their slick suits ready to go, and you've got this old man. It's this true story. They showed a picture of him. He shows up in his overalls, baggy shirt, big hat with the sun shield. <coughs> he ran day and night. He never stopped, and he finished 10 hours ahead of the number two runner. And everyone was just laughing at him that he showed up to do it. But he persevered. You know, right. he just did it. He was a shepherd, and he would work day and night chasing animals. And he just had his eye on the prize, and he went after it and yeah, did what it took. That's it. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's a good testimony. That's what we have to do. Yes, Keep yes. our eye on the prize. Right. Can't right. look to the right. Can't look to the left. And dare not look behind. We just got to keep pressing toward the mark. Amen. Well, I'm going to talk about some chains. My wife's going to kill me, but that's all right. This is a dirty chain, but that's okay. Because I'm going to wrap it around me. It's a good thing that Goodwill shirts come in handy every once in a while. But I got these chains. Let me sling it over my shoulder here. Got these chains. <clears throat> and the Lord dealt with me. I had like 10 sermons. And I don't know if you have ever gave a sermon or sermonette or ever taught a class or anything and uh, they've got it pretty well made uh, you know in the classes nowadays back when I started teaching you had to get down and pray and you know ask the Lord uh, something what was going on or what you needed for that day and I'm talking about I've taught kids all the way from the small ones all the way up and uh, preached you know to several congregations thank the Lord ain't nothing of me I'm just glad that he took a little boy from Niles Michigan and uh, went to school in a place called Brandywine of all things and we was the Brandywine Bobcats and in 1987, I just told my uh, bishop, I said, Bishop, I said, here we've got a bunch of musicians. I'm a young man, 19 years old, had a head full of hair. I was about 190 pounds and had a real good tan. And man, I mean, you know, and I said, Bishop, I says, I can you know, go down and be a music director somewhere, I said. And, and he asked me, he said, well, why do you want to leave here? He said, all your family's here. And he says, and I could use you here. I said, well, you've already got three choir directors. And I said, and you got all kinds of musicians. I said, 
why don't I go ahead and bless another assembly? And so I moved down here in 1987, was uh, the music director for five years at Dexter First Pentecost, and, um, and then the Lord saw fit to move us to Brother Kirby's for a while, and we was there for three years before I went back home. And uh, then I went back home, was there for 20 years, and four kids later. And, <laughs> now that sounds funny, but that's exactly how it happened. But you know, all through my life, I got thinking, I got reminiscing. You know, I believe that callings and gifts are given to people from birth. And... That's why a lot of folk, even if they don't uh, serve the Lord, they've got a mind for construction. They've got a mind for finances. They've got a mind for, you know, just putting things together. Got a mind for authority. I believe that's a gift and a calling from birth. Now, what you do with that gift and calling, that's up to you. If you use it to serve the Lord, then that's up to you. Because God's gifts and callings are without repentance. That's the word of God. And so he gives these gifts, I believe, when he gives that measure of faith to every man that comes into the world. But anyways, I got these chains. You know what? These chains are pretty heavy. I mean, I'm hauling around 300 pounds as it is, let alone all these other things, you know, just hanging around. But if you look, let's look in uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, starting with verse 18. And the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, this was after Jesus went out into the wilderness and uh, he was tempted of the devil and you know I, I honestly don't believe that the devil realized who he was dealing with um, you know that's neither here nor there I don't argue over that but I think every, you know, the devil hates you. I hate to tell you all that, if case that, you know, you thought he was going to be a chum. But really, honestly, he really absolutely hates you. Because every time he looks at a human, he sees God. And I don't think that God, you make sure that I keep them a time. Uh, I don't think that God sat down and ratchet jawed with the devil about wrapping himself in flesh, even though it's prophesied. And, you know, ratchet jawed about how powerful and what his plans were. Oh, no, no, no. I, I just have a hard time, you know, uh, um, you know, Having, having that in my mind, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But I believe that here everything happened that happened and that Mary conceived of the Holy Ghost and bore Jesus Christ. And I just kind of think that the devil was watching that. Wonder who he was. What is this? Because see, it's something new. Now see, those Jewish people, they were religious. I mean, they were, you know, the Ashalot. They were God's chosen people. Right. So when Jesus was ushered in on the scene, Jesus brought a new covenant with him. The old covenant was done away with or the law was fulfilled 
through Jesus and the veil was rent and now we're in the law of grace. Okay? Dispensation of grace. Now I got looking at this. If we are the body of Christ, then the same calling that Jesus had is the same calling that we have. Because we're his body. So the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel. Another translation said, the good news to the poor. How many of y'all are poor? <laughs> poor as church might sometimes. You know, sometimes you ain't got two nickels to uh, rub together, you know. And sometimes it seems like that you got more bills than you do have money or more months than you do. And you're thinking, okay, what do I do? But, you know, I've known a few rich folk, too. And I've known some that let the money get to them. And they end up shipwrecked. Mm -hmm. And that money ends up becoming a chain. And it binds them. And here they're trying to move. And they're trying to serve the Lord. But they got all this weight of the chains. Sometimes they're even around their wrists. Sometimes there's a whole lot more thicker chains than what this is. But preach the gospel to the poor. You know, sometimes you got to put up a lot with poor folk. Sometimes the poor folk, sometimes they have poor minds. And sometimes they just don't act like a Christian ought to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? You begin to hear chains rattling. Mm -hmm. I look at all the kids and remember, man, four or five years old, uh, Brother Urshan, and we're talking about years ago, and Brother McKellar and all of them, I was probably about four or five years old when Brother McKellar was our pastor there in South Bend, Indiana. And uh, he always tells everybody that I used to kick him in the shins. Now, could you picture me doing something like that? I'm not a mean little boy, you know. But anyways, he got up and told one time that I used to kick him in the shins. And I'd come over there at... Uh, Phil and Carl's and, and uh, you know, do all kinds of things. Of course, I know you probably don't know all those folks. But, you know, somehow in all everything, I'm glad that we see these little kids around here. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes some parents would like to choke them. Even though they scream when everything's quiet and it should be quiet and pious and everything. But you know, that's all a part of the chains beginning to rattle. And you say, Brother Cummins, you're done off your rocker. No. You know, there's people that we have come in that they don't know nothing about church, nothing about Pentecost. You know, they don't even know how to pray. They don't even know how to, how, how to act in church. But guess what? We're bringing the gospel and preaching the gospel to the poor. Okay, let's go on. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. How many has ever been brokenhearted? And these are things whether you serve God or whether you don't. I've been brokenhearted right. a few times. My heart's broke. And you think, man. But that's our job as a church. 
is when somebody comes in and their heart's broke. They don't know. You know, sometimes it's not just an easy crack to fix. Sometimes it's broken so badly and so just, just a travesty that it seems like there ain't even enough pieces to put together. You ever been around folk like that? Oh yeah, I have. And there's sometimes you just don't know if it's just dust or if there's actually pieces that you can put back together. But that's our job within these pews is to put back the hearts of men and women, okay? And I want you to think of all these different things as chains that it's got to come off as we begin to minister as the church. And then the Bible says, he has sent me, let's go on, to preach deliverance to the captives. Now I looked up the definition of a captive. And the definition of a captive is somebody that has been overtaken against their will. And I thought, man, that goes with this message. How many people do we see outside these four walls or even folk that are right here within our midst and it seems like they live in captivity and they're overtaken, sometimes faults of their own, sometimes no fault of their own. It was they just reaped the circumstance. Yes. Uh -huh. Are y'all following me? Right. And they're held captive in chains and they're held captive against their will. I believe there's a lot of people in your communities and in Puxico and wherever in the world that this is being viewed. I believe that there's people that want to do right, that want to be right, that want to serve God, but they're held captive. Yeah. Yeah. But it's our job as the church to set them free. That's right. There is nothing greater that, I mean, you know, I've, I've done, I've led some great choirs. I've led all the way from 20 all the way to 400. Uh, in a choir all at one time. and But that is nothing compared to someone receiving the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. And when, when, when that Holy Ghost, you can just see, you know, when that light bulb goes off and bang, and then they burst forth and speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the hundreds. And you begin to see the chains begin to fall off. Right. Okay, let's go on here. Um, okay, and recovering sight to the blind. I look up the word recovering. You know that it's not a miracle. Recovering is a process. Sometimes it's a slow process. Sometimes it's a fast process. Now I can tell you about that because I was in recovery after my heart attack and I went into a coma for three months and then two more months I was in, uh, well, up at Cape in recovery and then they moved me to Sykeston because I graduated and didn't have to wear no more diapers. And I graduated from being able to pull myself up on my walker. That was a long time. Of course, I was asleep for most of it. But them two months where I was awake and I knew what was going on, 
I mean, I was glad when they got rid of my feeding tube, and I was glad when they got, you know, where I could start eating something of my own self. And man, I was glad when I could get in the wheelchair and I could put the little foot things up and walk myself out right. in the wheelchair and get out in the sun. You know, if you ever been in a nursing home or rehab facility, uh, they ain't, they don't smell too good. Huh? Yeah. And how many people that are blind to the things of God? You know, when I was growing up, everybody kind of had a God consciousness. I mean, you know, it didn't matter whether you was Catholic, Baptist, or Pentecostal, or whatever. There was... There was a respect right. that you had and a God consciousness. I mean, everybody did, yeah. you know? Man. I can remember the neighbors used to get out and put their lawn chairs out and, and stuff at, at night and watch us kids play ball out in the middle of the road. And, you know, they'd pop popcorn and bake cookies and, I mean, just all kinds of things. You don't see that anymore, you know. And man, if one of the neighborhood neighborhood uh, people, if they heard, you know, one of the kids cuss or do something they weren't supposed to, well, there it didn't matter which yard you was in. That mama of that yard or that daddy of that yard, uh, excuse me, you don't say that. We don't talk like that. But you know, nowadays it's a little bit different. They've been blinded. I mean, some three-year-olds talk worse than some people that I grew up with that were teenagers. You know, they know more at five years of age than what I knew when I was a freshman. You know, that's sad. Yeah. That's sad. Because the devil has blinded. Is there not a scripture in the word of God that says that you can't be ignorant mm -hmm. concerning the devices of the devil? Right. And that's why we come to church. That's why we read our Bible. That's why we pray. It's because we can't allow ourselves to be de desensitized huh? All right. from this world right. and blinded. You know, have you ever heard the old saying, turn a blind eye to something? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. still sin. Mm -hmm. It don't matter if your eye is blind. God's eye ain't blind. Right. But that's our job. As the church. Now, let's see if that's all I want to do here. And we're coming sight to the blind. Everybody's at a different level. Everybody, some people, it takes a long time to recover. You know, it, it depends on how they lost their sight. Some people, their sight's lost from birth. Mm -hmm. Some people, their sight gets lost from an accident. And then some people, it's just in their makeup, in their body. Now, I hate to keep referencing myself, but that's exactly what happened with my eyeball. I mean, it was something that this big old long name that had whatever that last, or the, what is that disease? I can't even think now. That's awful. I'm over 50, so I can do that. <laughs> um, old people get it. No, the other one. 
But anyways, that's all right. Yeah, glaucoma, there you go. I am, old, I'm, yeah, nothing. But anyways, it was something, 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 glaucoma. And so, you know, get grad cataract surgery, everything, which I'm, I'm, see, I'm not seeing like I used to, but I am seeing better, thank the Lord. Right. Because I could have been blind. So it all depends. And that's why it's so imperative as us Christians that we stay sensitive to the Holy Ghost Amen. and the people, the children, right. if I can say that, Amen. that is being born into the kingdom. Because that's our responsibility. Right. Yeah. I don't care if you've been in a month or 30 years, you know, however long that you've been, or just maybe just hanging around, you know, you're still a part of the family, you know. And so we have to deal with people in recovery. And I got to thinking, you know, wow, ain't no wonder the pastor called that program recovery that's downstairs. Isn't that what it's called, right? Yeah. Because it's a process. You know, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we see him, we're going to see him as he is. And guess what? He's going to see us as we are with the blood. All right. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. All right. How am I doing on time? Ten minutes. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Man, I like this one. I really don't like this one, but I like this one. I looked up the word bruised. And, of course, it gave me, you know, the medical definition. That all those blood vessels, you know, get broke and, and that blood comes to the surface but don't break through the skin okay but if you go down it talks about biblically biblically there you go and it said crushed and I stopped right there and I thought, how many people has been in this world crushed? Amen. And it could be by mom or dad. Could be by husband or wife. It could be by children. It could be by preachers. It could be by Sunday school teachers. It could be by grandma or grandpa or uncles, aunts, whoever. Crushed. Now that's totally different than broken hearted. Because a break can be repaired. It may not always look really. Because believe me, I broke enough of my mom's cats. She didn't have real cats. She had, you know, uh, whatever you want to call them, everywhere. And uh, she that was her thing. She loved cats. I broke a lot of those. Broke a lot of my sister's dolls. So just because she made me mad. Uh, and she's eight years older than I am. So, you know, she got everything before I came along. Um, you know, they didn't always work. That one baby doll that I broke never sucked her thumb or the bottle quite the same way uh, after I got a hold of it. I'm telling off on myself. But 
how many people come in if they're crushed. They're beyond repair. I mean, crushed means you're pretty much just powder. Pretty much you might as well just be the dust of the earth because, you know. But only God. So God's got every facet of life. The poor, the brokenhearted, the blind, huh? All right. And now the bruised. And you know, one thing that I've learned through life, in my short 55 years, I mean, it seems like I closed my eyes and I was 19 years old, and then I opened my eyes and now I'm 55. You know, and I don't know if none of you other brothers do it, but I'll be just dreaming. Oh, I mean, my wife tells me I'm snoring and drooling all over my pillow, and I'll just be dreaming. And man, I'm that real nice, good looking fella back when I was 19 years old. And then I'll get up of the morning, look in the mirror, and realize that ain't how it is now <laughs> it ain't but you know what with everybody that comes in to this house and everybody's got a story if you don't then you're either dead or you're just awful lucky because even blessed people have got stories. And those stories are like chains. And here, trying to make them rattle a little bit. But you know what we see when we see people? I notice that most of the uh, new ones are uh, the ones from, what is that place called? Mingo. That is awful. Mingo. And they come over here. They don't know. You know, it's wonderful to, to see them from up here. I mean, I don't know if you notice them. But, man, their first service, they're like this. And then I see the next service, they're a little bit higher. And then the next service, I see tears running down their face. You know what that is? It's the chains that are beginning to shake. The chains are beginning to move. Amen. I see these precious kids. I see them. I ain't going to tell who did it, but, you know, I noticed the other day that somebody turned the bottom set of lights on red instead of blue. But they, that's all right, you know. I see them come up and they got their cars and stuff like that out, you know, and doing different things. But you don't know the feeling that they can feel when they're in the presence of God. And so what if they get a little rambunctious? I know I get tired too sometimes because you know your what is that old saying that you can only uh, endure what um, the seat will endure or something like that huh we're all like that and I'm just a big kid that's all it is but you know what I told pastor there was one more verse of that song, there is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. There was one more part. I told him not to sing it because I want it sung now. But every time I come into this place, 
I hear the chains falling. Oh, yes, amen. You know, we may not be where God wants us to be, but we're here and we're seeing the chains fall. People's lives are being changed. Uh-huh. Changed, that's right. Man. No longer bound. Praise God. When we worship the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I hear. Yeah. Praise God. I hear the chains fall. And if they've left, I know probably, I don't know if my shirt's dirty or not. <laughs> but if any stains are left uh -huh. on the garments, God says, take off that garment of heaviness All right. and God. put on that garment of praise. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it all. Hearing them chains fall. So what if we got to put a little bit of effort, a little bit of elbow grease or whatever. Uh, yeah. So what if we've got to do just a little bit more to make sure that a soul reaches heaven and that a soul is changed? Did you know the Bible says that those people, those souls that we convert to Jesus, not to us. But the Bible says there's stars in our crown. And someday, if we have all those stars in our crown, the Bible says we're going to take it off someday and throw it at the Lord's feet. Because he's the only one that deserves any praise. Yes. I hear, I hear the sound of chains falling. Yes. Lives being changed. All right. Hope being restored. Yes. Blinded eyes open, both spiritual and natural. Thank you. There is power. Go ahead, Pastor. Would you stand and let's sing it together? Came to you. Hallelujah. That's the mercy. 
you, our God. That's the sound of those chains falling off our lives. Thank you, Lord. If you did it for us, you'll do it for others. You're no respecter of persons. You're still doing it. We thank you for that, God. those next couple of scriptures from that same passage he said that Jesus closed the book and he said this day these scriptures are fulfilled in your hearing amen he's already paid the price he's already brought to us that new covenant amen that victory is already here for us and for those that we're ministering to and I just feel encouraged tonight Amen. For those areas that we're branching out into, reaching out into, there's such a harvest of souls. Uh, on Sunday, we had a baptism here about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, it was a gentleman from another group home over at Brosley. And one of the recovery ministries in our area um, asked if they could bring him here to be baptized. And I said, of course, you know. These places are ripe for a move of God. Yeah. And many times they can't even, uh, they're not close enough to get to the house of God, don't have transportation, and in out of the way places. And so I began to talk to the guy about this group home, and um, I feel a burden. We need to get more ministry started in these areas. Amen. In these places where uh, the poor, the blind, Amen. The highways, the byways. Jesus said, go and compel them to come in. And that's what this message is telling us yet again tonight. Amen. Our God can break the chains. And uh, he can deliver. He can save. And we have to realize that we are his body. As he said, everything that was said, that Jesus said of himself, he was saying there of his church. We are his anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. And if his power is present in our lives, we have the same mission that he had. Yes. Amen. He passed it on to us. That was just preached to us. Um, I believe even this past Sunday, all the messages have kind of been flowing together. Amen. Let's take this word of God. Let's continue in what the Lord has called us to do. Amen. Amen. Let's be those who will help people get free of their chains. Amen. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you. We thank you for your presence that's been here tonight. From the start to this finish tonight, God, you're here. And in fact, I believe that there's not even a conclusion, but we're just going to take this spirit that we feel and go out and continue to minister, Lord, throughout the rest of this week. Help us to bring someone new to your house this Sunday. Help us, God, to be vessels that you can use. We give you praise and thanks for it in your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. We'll see you on Sunday. Let's come back believing for a great move of God in the house of the Lord.